Howdy there folks and welcome in to, I think this is the fifth video in the history of this channel. We're talking about Tesla stock in this video. Uh, I just watched a great piece put out by a channel called Solving the Money Problem. And uh, I've seen many videos over the last uh, couple years from this gentleman. He's the most, I think he's the most bullish Tesla person on YouTube. Honestly, he makes me feel like I'm a Tesla bear to be quite honest. And uh, he makes a great point in this video. And I thought this was worth uh, doing a reaction to this because I think the point he makes here is one of the most important points in regards to analysts that not a lot of people understand or see out there. And I think this is very important. So let me react to this and let's talk about this here. For Target a on the stock is what, $733. That's essentially not far from where we're at right now. I'm sure many of you saw this one coming. We're looking at the tipranks.com profile of Jeff Osborne of Cowan. With the $733 per share price target on Tesla stock, I'm super big on credibility around these parts. And, um, well, let's see here. Initiated coverage on Tesla in September 2016 with a sell. Continued to suggest investors sell throughout 2017 and 2018 and 2019 and 2020. And then after Tesla stock starts heading toward the moon, inexplicably changes the tune to a hold. Hold, 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 hold. Now, if you'd been following the advice of Jeff never here, buy. you would never have purchased Tesla stock. There is zero, zero buy ratings in the last, call it five or so years. Zero. Is this someone who has any credibility at all when it comes to Tesla stock? And I would argue, no. Success rate on the stock, 22%. Average profit on stock, loss of 128.8%. Now, this isn't to say that Jeff may not have some valid points about Tesla, but this is to say that when Jeff has anything at all to say about Tesla's stock, it's really not worth listening. At the same time that I personally believe Tesla stock is the best risk-adjusted opportunity by miles. That I'm so we'll get into more of this in just a second here and talking about the competition and talking about, uh, you know, what's going on in that landscape. I think that overarching point there is really why I wanted to do this reaction. I think that is one of the most important subjects that is so underrated in the stock market because the analyst community is this massive thing in the stock market. And if an analyst comes out and says, buy the stocks, many times the stock will and move up because an analyst comes out and says, buy it, right? And many times if an analyst says, sell the stock, the stock will move down, right? And it's crazy how much power the, these analysts have, and especially the ones that work for a lot of the biggest investment banks and biggest banks in general, right? They have a lot of power, and they can, at least in the short term many times, basically control where a stock price goes. And here we are in this moment where it's like this man has been wrong on the stock for six years, for six flip and flapjacking years. And so if you were wrong about a stock for six, 12, 18 months, maybe even 24 months, fair play, okay? Six years is a whole different animal. If, you know, this man was saying sell this stock when it was down and out, right? Meanwhile, he was still saying sell this stock even in moments when Model 3 had already ramped, when the company had made great strides to profitability and free cash flow, he was still saying sell, right? I mean, it would have been one thing for him to say, like, hold or, or sell back when, you know, the, the business model was more questionable, like when I was getting involved with it and they were obviously losing a lot of money back in those days, right? I was very confident that Tesla was going to make this flip to profitability and an immense profitability, and that's something that played out. But the fact that that man saw margins starting to improve, free cash flow starting to improve, profitability start to improve, the revenue skyrocketing, the insane demand, and he still still remain a sell on that stock, right? <clears throat> and then once the stock price starts going to the moon, as they say, right, then to also flip and say, hey, you know what? Uh, don't buy the stock. Just hold the stock. I mean, it's like, come on, man. And yet these people get so much publicity, obviously. And if this man comes out and says sell or buy, it's going to make all these different news releases and everybody's going to pay attention to it. And they're going to go on these big news networks and things like that. When it's like, what, what credibility do you have if you're wrong about a, this, this particular stock six years in a row, right? I mean, uh, it's kind of ridiculous, I, I think, just at the end of the day. But that's the analyst community. That's Wall Street. That's part of the stock market game. I don't think it's right, but it is part of the game, right? Personally aware of in the stock market, Jeff Osborne here is recommending don't buy the stock. No, 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 no. At best, just hold on. This 
will not age well. And speaking of credibility, I encourage you, set a reminder for 12, 24, 36 months time for me to revisit this video and this prediction and me taking a dump on Jeff for having no idea what he's talking about, at least when it comes to Tesla's stock. Uh, what did you see in the earnings report that tells you we could go sideways from here on? He's very, very confident. Very, very confident about Tesla in their future. I'll just put it that way. That's why I said this man makes me feel like I'm a Tesla bear. It's a whole different well, level. What he made, as Proz mentioned, um, you know, we were looking for an over $400 million charge uh, this quarter from the Bitcoin uh, collapse. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't play out. And uh, it was about a, a quarter of that, given they sold three quarters of their stake. Uh, they also had a, a pretty dramatic... You notice his word choice there. Why is it unfortunate? Why is it unfortunate? What's unfortunate about that? The Bitcoin uh, collapse, unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, that didn't play out. And uh, it was about a, a quarter of that, given they sold three It's almost like this man was rooting for the stock to go down. He's like, unfortunately... Uh, it didn't happen, and uh, the stock went up. Uh. Their stake. Uh, they also had a, a pretty dramatic uh, decline in R&D expenses. Uh, but really, the next few quarters are really about ramping up two new factories. Uh, they haven't done that since Shanghai ramped up. That'll be the, the laser-focused moment for investors, as well as there's a bunch of new competitive threats coming out. <laughs> so, according to Jeff, who, as we've just seen... Uh, a bunch of new competitive threats coming out, you know, oh, man. It just cracks me up. It's crazy. Incredible. Up. And I mean the literal sense of incredible, not the colloquial sense. Just not credible. Tesla has some actual legitimate competitive threats coming. And I think this actually is a valid point. Tesla will be producing them themselves, cannibalizing their own products. That's about the only legitimate threats to Tesla that Tesla has is their new products. Uh, you see Ford in the news today doubling down on their EV strategy, but also GM this week with the Blazer, and you've got the Silverado on deck as well. So, uh, so you know, th this talk of competition coming, you know, for anybody that's watching this, it's been a Tesla bull for many, many years. This has been the thing that has been talked about for the longest time, that competition's coming, competition's coming. But we have yet to see, and here we are now in the back half of 2022, we have yet to see any serious competitive threat in terms of big sales volume in North America, right? Or in Europe for that matter. China is a little bit of a messy market, but that's a little bit of a whole other situation on what's a true EV and, and different things like that, right? But we're in this moment in time where in North America, it's like, who's really moving big volume when it comes to EVs? Here in the back half of 2022, it's like Tesla and that's it. Everybody else has got EV products out there now, but the issue, there's so many issues for all these competitors, let's call them that, of Tesla that want to compete in electric vehicles, right? All these companies are going to have to go through this awkward stage of basically destroying the profits they're making from ICE vehicles to try to funnel money into EVs, which they're going to likely lose money on. And that's why you can't even, like, I looked at Ford. I was looking at Ford today. They, they had this uh, incredible quarter they just reported. They blew revenue out of the water. They blew earnings per share out of the water. And I was watching the stock price reaction off to this massive beats. Stock price was up like 3%, 4% after hours. I was like, why is that stock not, you know, they just blew numbers out of the water. Like, why is that stock not up 10, 15, 20%? Well, because Ford investors or anybody that pays attention to that stock understands the market's moving to EVs. And if Ford's going to start making a bunch of EVs, they're going to likely end up losing a ton of money. And so you're going to watch the profitability of Ford erode and erode and erode if that company sells more and more EVs. So they're kind of in this catch-22 because it was like they've got to make more EVs. They've got to continue on this path because that's where the market is going toward EVs. But at the same time, they're going to likely lose a fortune at least for the next few years for every EV sold. And in order to get to a place where they're prof profitable as far as selling EVs, no one knows if that day is ever going to fully actually come for those companies. And if it does, it's going to likely be years in, in, in the future. Remember, Tesla, look at how long it took Tesla to get profitable. I mean, that company was making EVs for over a decade before they finally hit profitability, right? It was a, it was a long, drawn-out battle to finally get to profitability and start to get to scale. And now we see Tesla starting to hit margins. And starting to get to levels of profitability that was we no one ever even conceived that an automaker could get this profitable. Even myself, as somebody that was a Tesla bull and was buying the stock in 2018, 2019, they've gotten much more profitable than I even expected at this stage of the game, which is almost scary for everybody else. Meanwhile, Tesla's going to be able to reinvest back into the business as a profitable EV, EV maker, right? 
while the other guys are going to be in the situation where they're going to likely be losing a bunch of money on EVs and trying to invest into it. And it's a big wild card if they're going to ever reach big scale. Who's to say everybody's going to want an EV from Ford, right? And they're going to be doing millions of volume a year in EVs. Who's to say that everybody's going to want an electric Silverado? Like, we don't know. Maybe, maybe not. You know, we have we haven't seen any proof of that yet, right? So it's a big, huge wild card, and um, you know, we we do know Tesla moves crazy volume, right? We do know that there's massive demand for those sorts of EVs, but what about everybody else? Do they really care? That remains to be seen, and that's why those uh, shareholder bases are having trouble getting anybody really excited about their kind of futures. So anyways, guys, much love as always. I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to make sure we shouted out solving the money problem because I think he just made a great point there about analysts that's obviously like just usually swept under the rug, and I think that's uh, worth addressing there. So much love as always, guys, and have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Brand new channel. Peace.